Hey everybody, John here. Today is Monday, March 14th. It is Pi Day. I am back again with version 10.10.2 of full self-driving beta from Tesla. So I am located here in the northwest suburbs of Chicago and I'm gonna test 10.10.2 to see if it can take me all the way from my home to my office. So I am here, I'm gonna go ahead and double tap down. That's all I need to do. And now the car is gonna take off and drive itself all the way from this neighborhood here to my office. So I am not using my feet and I'm not using my hands. Although I am monitoring the system at all times, the steering wheel does request for feedback. So every so often I do need to give it some feedback to let it know that I am here. The in-cabin camera is also tracking my eyes and the position of my head. So if I were to move too far over to the right for too long, it would recognize that and then give you a prompt. And then you get three of those prompts and you get a strike. You get five strikes and then they take away beta from you. So beta is not complete, it can make mistakes. In fact, it is far from perfect. I've noticed a lot of things that make it very uncomfortable and probably the best description I can come up with is awkward. When you're around other drivers, it's very awkward. So right now it's pulling out probably at the, not the most opportune time there because there was a car coming up behind us it could have gone a lot sooner and made it a lot more comfortable, but it did speed up just fine and that other car did not mind at all. They're still behind us. It is a van that's behind us. So here we are, it needs to get into the far right turn lane and it's been doing that brilliantly. It has fixed that. This is the first issue with my daily commute here is this turn and it has, I'd say probably 80% of the time now gotten it perfect. So that appears to have been fixed. I'm super happy I was reporting that very frequently and now it appears that that is no longer an issue. So that is the first improvement that I have noticed and it's really exciting for me to see that it's gotten better in those situations. So on my commute here, there's really three trouble areas. That was the first one. The second one is coming up on Higgins, which is what we're on right now, and Roselle. And Roselle runs perpendicular. You're gonna see here, if the traffic light is green, which it looks like there's a, a high probability it will be green, the car will slow down as it goes through the intersection. And that has always been a pain point for me because especially if somebody's right behind us, it's extremely annoying and you do have to intervene to nudge it forward. And I've zoomed in on the maps many times to try to figure out why it's doing that. And I really don't have a clue up until this stage. And the maps data has been updated since I first started testing this too. So I don't know if the maps data changed in this particular area, but it does potentially appear to be a map issue. So here we are, it is green. It looks like we're going slow enough that this may not present itself, but essentially if you're going uh, you know, full speed through this intersection, it slows down tremendously. So here we are, 17, 18, 19. Okay, now it's slowing down, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So I'm letting it do it. There's nobody behind us, but as you saw right there, it slowed down. So I'm gonna report that. That is definitely not acceptable behavior for traffic that's around you. And I don't know, again, why it takes so much caution in that one particular intersection. It's no different than any of the others that I've observed, at least from the map standpoint. And if I zoom in here, you can see once the map refreshes here, You can see here, it's a little bit strange. So, you know, it's in the left lane and it kind of, I don't know, I mean, it kind of goes around. It's maybe, maybe it's a map issue. It's really hard to tell, but it always struggles at that particular intersection. So the car just got into the middle lane and it's a little bit mysterious to me why it would have done that because coming up here, it does need to make a right turn onto Meacham Road. So we are gonna have to get in the right lane here pretty soon and we're gonna be cutting into this traffic because there's quite a bit of cars in the far right lane now and any minute this is gonna turn blue. There it is, blue, it's saying tap to cancel. This is the upcoming lane change. So it does know that it needs to get over. Not sure why it got in the middle to begin with, but looks like we are going to have a nice gap behind this semi truck to get behind. 
if it chooses to take this gap it is there right now available there it is okay great it's making the change so i don't need to give any feedback unlike when you're on the highways where it executes a lane change it does require feedback you can't turn that off you can turn on the automatic lane changing feature when you're on the highway but you still need to give it a little bit of feedback you need to acknowledge that it's going to make that turn now when you're on these city streets though the car will change lanes without requiring any feedback. So sometimes that will happen suddenly. And in fact, I had it happen right here at this same intersection. I'll grab a video feed of it. Essentially, it tried to go around stop traffic right about here when it really needed to wait to get into this right turn lane. So here we're coming up and again, same situation. This truck is slowing down. It better not try to go left. Uh, okay, good. So it was patient enough to wait in this lane. Very good. So there we go. It's going to get in the right turn lane. Now this is the third trouble spot for beta. So it slows down unnecessarily here. It is a green light and it hesitates. Nobody behind us. If somebody was behind us, they would have honked at us for sure. And now coming up here, it never used to get over early enough. And here again, it looks like the Okay, that's a little bit smoother. It's getting over earlier, but most of the time previously, the curb would kind of push the car into this lane, and then you'd end up kicking up a bunch of debris on the side of the road. It was always really annoying, but it looks like it's gotten a lot better at that. So that's another noticeable improvement that has happened consistently. So I'm really happy to see those situations. That means that it really is improving, and ideally what I believe is taking into account all the feedback that I'm providing on a regular basis and I'm optimistic that that is the case. However, you never can be quite sure. So there I just received a please pay attention to the road message, whereas I am paying complete attention. At this point, when it makes a mistake like that, it really annoys me. So what I typically do is I shut it out. And what I do is I just pull my visor and slide it over. So it blocks my eyes. And that stops the cameras from falsely triggering there. So we just went through a really nice puddle there. I just cleaned my car, so I'll have to wipe the right side of my car down later, but not a big deal. So here we are coming up, it's 40 miles per hour. It is going 45, pretty straightforward. Everything's going just as expected here. Okay, and turn signal comes on a little bit too late for me. There it turned on and then turned right back off again. And now turning back on, slowing down more than I probably would, but that's okay. And coming through here, great. All right, so that brings us to our final destination. So thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully with version 10.11.